Good morning. As you look over my shoulder, you see the sign there. It's Psalm 150, verse 6, that everything that have breath, praise the Lord. And that's sometimes difficult for us because, as I said, we are tired. We've been sheltering in place for longer than we have ever desired or thought. But remember, God has a plan. And his plan is that we are a part of his plan to know him and to make him known. So again, allow the Father to do his perfect work in you. Today we're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Let me read them to you because they will encourage us. Because this is Paul, again, who's trying to encourage the Corinthians, who's talking about parts of his own life. And so it is for us as well that he speaks into us. He says, therefore... Since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, don't lose heart. We have received mercy. Don't lose heart. But we have renounced the things hidden because of shame, not walking in craftiness or adulterating the word of God, but by manifesting the truth, by commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. In other words, we're trying to live godly lives in front of everyone. Why? because we want everything about us, our breath, our lives, to glorify the Lord. Then he goes on. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world, that is Satan, has blinded their minds so that unbelieving, they might not see the light of the gospel of Christ Jesus, who is indeed the image of God. Therefore, we don't preach ourselves. We don't live for ourselves. No, indeed, we preach Christ Jesus as we ourselves are bondservants for his sake. For it is God who said, let light shine out of darkness, is the one who shined into our hearts and given us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God face to face. That's who we are. We're Christ's bondservants. We have the light of Christ in us. And yes, the world around us, and there's many ways to shape this, don't know the Father. And they're worried, they're afraid, they're scared. So what do we do? We get to speak Christ into them by helping them to understand. Paul says, since we have received mercy, don't lose heart. I know sometimes you feel like your life is, oh my gosh, what's going on here? Yet the Father says, no, I have a plan. Let me take these things in your life and turn them to good. Because remember, Romans 8, 28, God has a plan. For all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to His purpose. That's us. So where are we encouraged here? Well, often in our lives, we feel like we've failed. We feel like, well, we can't do things. I don't know what to do. The Father says, no, I am with you. Sometimes we feel inadequate. And the Father says, no, I am with you. Here's two stories that will hopefully encourage your hearts. The story is told in faith today several years ago about Winton Marsalis. If you haven't heard Winton Marsalis play his trumpet, you have missed out. My suspicions are that Gabriel waits in heaven saying, Okay, Father, when's Winton going to come and blow a trumpet with me? He's good. Because he is. He really is. But the story goes this way. that He's at some small club in New York. And he's playing an old song. And the old song is an old blues ballad called I Can't Stand a Ghost of a Chance Without You. It's one of those haunting songs where you just listen to it and you get caught into it because it's a song of despair. Sometimes you're gasping in pain at the music. That's our lives sometimes. We feel that way. I'm gasping because of the pain here. And so as Marcellus plays and gets to the final phrase, he's playing each note slower and slower as to emphasize them because he's trying to get the folks' attention. And so he, he, he plays that song, and the last phrase goes this way, I don't stand a ghost of a chance. And then the spell is broken by someone's cell phone going off. <laughs> I tell people when I do funerals, I, the first thing I do is I say, friends, I ask you to turn off your cell phone, your Blackberry, whatever it is you are, you are using, because I guarantee you two things. One, it will ring. And two, if God's going to call you, he's not going to use your cell phone. Well, the song, it goes off with some little beep, and of course, 
you know, you're always embarrassed. You can't find it fast enough. You can't turn it off. So this gentleman finds it and runs out the hole. The spell is broken. But what does Winton do? He plays that cell phone beat note by note on his trumpet. And then he began to play it again in different tones, in different keys, changing the arrangement several times. And the audience began to settle down. And he played it for several minutes, weaving glory out of godlessness. That's what God does to us. He takes the little bit that we have, our mistakes, he takes the things where we're tired, and then weaves them all back together. He's into that story. Finally, he wound it down seamlessly to the last two notes of his previous song. Remember what it was? He was slowing out. I don't stand a chance. without you. And he brought it all back together so that we could see and know the mastery of God. And that's the mastery of God in our lives. He's saying God adapts things to us. He adapts, why? Because we're his children and he loves us. And yes, Paul reminds us again, don't lose heart because even in the feeling that you're losing heart, the Father says no. I've got this. I have a plan here. Why? Because we as Christians have renounced the things hidden because of shame. We don't participate in them. We don't walk in craftiness. We walk in truth. We don't walk in deceitfulness or adulterating the truth of God. No, right? Because we have the truth of Christ living in us. The Father speaks there into our hearts. He helps us. And then here's another quick story for us. This is an urban legend, but it works for us. And it's about Poland's famous concert pianist and prime minister, Ignaz Paderewski. And the story goes like this. A mom brings her child that she's trying to encourage in his piano to see the master at work. And so you get there and your mom starts talking to her friends and what does an eight-year-old boy do? He begins to wander out because he is bored. And so what does he see? He sees up on the grand stage this wonderful piano. So he goes up, and just at the belt, the chimes go off. Mom's looking for him. She can't find him. And then suddenly the people are in awe. They're gasping. There's a little kid up on the stage playing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And so Mom is going to rush up and grab her kid off the stage. And the usher stops her because out walks Paderewski. And he sits next to the kid and begins to play the bass. And then he takes his other hand and begins to play the upper range. And together they play Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And the little boy now is embarrassed. And he wants to stop. The maestro reaches over to him and says, don't stop playing. Keep playing. And so the two of them kept playing. Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. How I wonder what you are. No, you say, what's that got to do with my spiritual life? Everything. Because we often feel inadequate. I want to give up. I'm tired. I'm worn out. I'm weary. I'm losing heart. And the Father sits down with us, his arms around us, and keeps playing and says, don't give up. Keep playing. Keep praying. Keep being the person that I am making you. Let my light shine through you. Don't give up because I am for you and with you. Don't give up because I'm sitting right here next to you. I am the God who speaks life into you. Why? Because I have shined my light into your presence, into your heart, that you know and walk with me. So my friends today, remember, everywhere we go, we shine light in the darkness. We can't give up. My last one is this one. Years ago, my wife had to sing up at Mount Davidson. It's a trek to get up there. So we were walking up the, up the driveway to get up to the top to the cross because she's supposed to sing. It's early Easter Sunday morning. You know, we're out of bed way earlier than we normally are, but you know, we got to go serve because that's what we do. And we're walking with another friend of mine. He's got a little limp. And so we're walking. She looks at him. She looks up at the cross, still a distance away. 
And then this thought comes to her mind. She says, if Jesus can go to the cross and die for me, I can keep walking up this mountain and not lose heart because he's going to sing through me today. That's what the Father does in our life every day. He sings through us. He speaks through us. He guides through us that men and women know and walk with him. Lord Jesus, thank you. Lord, encourage our hearts today that, Father, we do not give up, but, Lord, instead, we are energized by you because, Lord, you give us the light of your presence. These things, Lord, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Jesus. Amen. Go forth and be blessed today.